Is it possible to treat many different products as if they were one? In this video you will learn what is sales mix or product mix. How to use CVP analysis for multiple products defined as sales mix. And if it is possible to treat many products as if they were one. In this video I will tell you more about multi-product profitability. In the previous approach I showed you how to apply the CVP analysis to the contribution margin of a particular product. We analyzed each product separately. Another possible solution is to convert the multi-product problem into a single product problem. It sounds so simple, but is it really possible? If this can be done, then all calculations from the single product CVP analysis can be applied directly. The key is to identify the expected sales mix in units of the product being marketed. Most companies sell a mix of many different products. In fact, the term sales mix is often used to describe the relative percentages of total sales provided by different products. For this reason, we define sales mix or product mix as the relative combination of products sold by the company. In other words, a sales mix is the collection of all of the products and services a company offers and we will treat such a collection as one unit. Clever, isn't it? This approach will allow the application of the CVP analysis to the business viewed as a whole, not by analyzing each product separately as we did before. The size mix can be measured in units sold or in proportion of revenue. Let's see an example. Suppose a company sells two types of water, steel and sparkling. These are two different products. If the company plans on selling 12.5 million uh, bottles of steel water and 7.5 million of sparkling waters, then the sales mix in units is 12.5 million to 7.5 million. To make it easier to calculate, let's reduce it to the smallest possible whole numbers. Thus, the relative mix 12.5 million to 7.5 million can be reduced to 125 to 75 and further 5 to 3. That is, for every 5 bottles of still water sold, 3 bottles of sparkling water are sold. The sales mix in units is 5 to 3. That is, of every 5 bottles of water sold, 62.5% contain still water and 37.5% sparkling water. Alternatively, the sales mix can be represented by the percent of total revenue contributed by each product. Suppose the unit price of still water is 50 cents and sparkling water is 35 cents. In our case, the still water revenue is 6.25 million dollars and the sparkling water revenue is 
652 million dollars. Still water accounts for 70.42% of total revenue and sparking water accounts for the remaining 29.58%. As you can see, sales and revenues of both products are also not equal. However, the revenue-based sales mix structure is different from the unit-based sales structure. Why is there such a difference? The sales mix in revenue takes the sales mix in units and weights it by price, which is different in both cases. Therefore, even though the underlying proportion of the two types of water remains 5 to 3, the lower priced sparking water is weighted less heavily when price is factored in. We will use the sales mix expressed in units first. Defining a particular sales mix allows us to convert a multiple product problem into a single product CVP format. Since the company expects to sell five bottles of still water for every three bottles of sparking water, we can define the single product it sells as a package containing five bottles of still water and three bottles of sparkling water. We will treat it as a one unit. By defining the package as a unit, the multiple product problem is converted into a single product problem. To use this approach, the package selling price and variable cost per package must be known. To compute this package values, we need the sales mix, the individual product prices and the individual variable costs. We already have almost all the data. Unit costs are still missing. Let's assume that the unit cost of still water is 20 cents and sparkling water is 25 cents. The situation will look like this. From that moment on, we have a contribution margin of the unit, which is our package. Now we can use the fundamental break-even equation to determine the number of packages that need to be sold to break even. Suppose our company's fixed cost is $90,000. Thus, the break-even point is 50,000 packages. Now we have to properly interpret the obtained result. To reach the break-even point, the company must sell 50,000 packages. This means selling 250,000 units of still water and 150,000 units of sparkling water. Another way to apply CVP analysis when multiple products are sold is to switch from the units sold to the sales revenue approach. This time we will use only the summary data found in the company's income statement. For this reason, I'm going to present you the projected income statement which will be used in the calculations. We already know uh, the value of sales, but we haven't calculated the value of variable costs for the package yet. Let's do it now. If we subtract the variable costs from the sales value, we get a contribution margin of $4.5 million. We already know the fixed costs. If we subtract the fixed costs from the contribution margin, we get an operating income of $4.41 million. This is our projected income statement. Now we will calculate the contribution margin ratio. 
That was easy, but I would like you to know one more way to calculate the contribution margin ratio. If we use it, we can check if the contribution margin was calculated correctly a moment ago. Notice that still water has a higher contribution margin ratio than sparking water. Our company can improve its average contribution ratio and its overall profitability by shifting its sales mix to include more products with high contribution margin ratios. Future managers should remember this piece of advice. The average contribution margin ratio of a package may be computed but by weighting the contribution margin ratio of each product by the percentage of total sales which that product represents. Let's do it now. We have just calculated the product contribution margin ratio and earlier we have calculated the percentage of sales. To weight means to multiply the contribution margin ratio by its share in sales. If we add both values now, we get the average contribution margin ratio. Look, it's exactly the same as the one we calculated earlier. We can calculate the break-even point in sales now. To reach the break-even point in our company, we need to sell packages for $177,550. It's time for conclusions. Selling many different products can be treated as selling a package, which will allow you to apply CVP analysis and to calculate break-even point and target income of the package. A change in the price of the product or J structure in the package will change the break-even and target income values. The complexity of the approach of break-even point in units increases dramatically as the number of products increases. For this reason, companies tend to analyze products groups rather than individual products. To handle the increased complexity is to switch from the package unit sold to the package sales revenue approach, but the package break-even point in sales or package target income in sales avoids the profitability of, of individual products. It's time to answer the question from the beginning of this video, which was, is it possible to treat many different products as if they were one? I'm sure you already know the answer to this question after watching this video. We can treat various products as if they were a package. Then we treat one package as if it was one.